Wednesday after Supreme Court's wrap, SBI has now sent all electoral bonds data to the Election Commission, thus complying with the Supreme Court order. Remember, SBI had sought further extension from the top court, which the Supreme Court had in fact refused. For more on this, let me go across to my colleague Sunil Prabhu. Sunil, we do uh, believe that the Supreme Court had also told Election Commission to publish the data that they have as far as electoral bonds is concerned. In terms of the next steps that will play out with regard to this case, what can we expect now? Well, there are three aspects that need to be uh, taken into account. One is uh, what the Supreme Court had asked yesterday, that the entire donor list in terms of those who bought electoral bonds should be given, as well as uh, the encashment in terms of political parties in cashing those electoral bonds. So that data, that aspect has been submitted to the Election Commission by the State Bank of India in compliance with the, uh, with the, uh, the Supreme Court order. The second aspect is about the State Bank of India, the Chairman Managing Director, his affidavit. That too will be filed by tomorrow morning uh, in terms of compliance to ensure that he does not get contempt of court. So that direction is also being done. The third aspect is about the fact that there were certain electoral bonds details up to 2019 which was submitted to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said forthwith the Election Commission, that means immediately, must publish that data on its website. It hasn't done so, whether it will do it on the 15th of uh, March along with the rest of the data or independently is anybody's guess. It's beyond 24 hours. We haven't got any you know, uh, correct view from the Election Commission. It's uh, certain details that are still being worked out uh, because it's a lot of data that it's in. It's a data mined wealth because uh, this is a wealth of information. Who are these companies? Whether they're shell companies? Did they have NPAs? Uh, did they get any benefits in terms of government projects? Uh, how did this entire process go about it? Were there any investigations against them? All this information through the KYC details will be made public. So it's in that context uh, that it's extremely important uh, that this information is being made public on the 15th of March. Right, a significant story there, especially in election season. Sunil Prabhu there, thank you so much for joining us with that. Shifting focus now to another one of our top stories. Musical chairs in Haryana ahead of the Lok Sabha elections. With just days to go for the Lok Sabha dates to be announced, BJP has rejected the leadership in Haryana. Manohar Lal Khattar has been replaced with Nayab Singh Saini, the state party chief. This as BJP decides to go solo in the state and breaks ties with JJP. So exactly what is the reason behind this political realignment? Ghazali has more. Weeks before the Lok Sabha polls and seven months before Haryana's crucial assembly election, the state has a new chief minister, Kurukshetra MP and OBC leader Nayab Singh Saini, who replaced incumbent Manohar Lal Khattar, asked after Mr. Khattar and the entire Haryana cabinet stepped down. The move came after the ruling BJP-JJP alliance broke up after failed Lok Sabha seat-sharing talks. The BJP was unwilling to give the JJP, headed by ex-Deputy Chief Minister Dushan Chautala, two of the state's ten seats. But the party was also hesitant about sacking Mr. Chautala, a move it felt could anger farmers and the Jat community. So the BJP opted to break up the government. At a meeting of JJP MLAs at Dushan Chautala's Delhi farmhouse, only four or five of the ten MLAs of the party turned up. BJP. And now due to these developments, there is a speculation that the former Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar may contest the Lok Sabha polls from Kukshet, which has now been vacated because Mr. Saini is now the Chief Minister. The shuffle in Haryana's political landscape also comes amid a possible strengthening of the Congress's hand in the state. Last week, the BJP's Hisar MP Brijendra Singh joined the Congress. In the 2019 Assembly election, the Congress won 31 seats up from just 15 five years earlier. In the general election earlier that year, the Congress failed to win any seat, 
but finished second to the BJP in all 10 and saw a 5.5% increase in its vote share. At a meeting of BJP MLAs earlier today in Chandigarh, BJP observers were reportedly told MLAs and the state unit wanted a new hand at the helm to revitalize the party before the Lok Sabha election and the assembly polls later this year. Mr. Sani's appointment as chief minister also represents the fact that how BJP is focusing on caste and OBC factor in every state before the general elections. The Sani caste from which the chief minister hails constitutes around 8% of the population in Haryana. In Panchkula, Mohammad Ghazali for NDTV. Meanwhile, Congress has come out with a second list of candidates with 43 names being included in the list. Several young Turks from the Congress like Gaurav Gogoi, Nakul Nath and Vaibhav Gehlot have been named as candidates once again. Gaurav Gogoi will contest from Assam's Jorhat, Nakul Nath from Chindwara and Vaibhav Gehlot from Jalor. Meanwhile, there's uncertainty over whether party chief Malikarjun Kharge will contest the Lok Sabha elections this time around. Sources say that Kharge may sit out this time to keep an eye on the overall party preparation. The party sources also suggest that they want several senior leaders to contest. Many of them are reluctant. Kharge, in fact, exhorted the senior leaders today, pointing out that party's call is supreme. I'm 83 years old. आपको तो 65 में खत्म कर देते तुम्हारे रिटायर होने के लिए मैंने सुनी सुनी तो मैं 83 हूँ नेचुरली हटता हूँ अगर आप चांस दे सब जगह के बोले हमारे पार्टी के कार्यकर्ताओं को लड़ने दो उनको बोले तो जरूर मैं लड़ूँगा Right, so Malikarjun uh, Kharge there, in fact, talking about how he's 80s, in his 80s, and there are people who are in their 60s, late 60s, who should be willing to take up the role if the party wants them to contest this time around. Uh, let me go across to my colleague Sunil Prabhu for more on this. Sunil, uh, you know, there are murmurs, of course, that several senior leaders don't want to really uh, get down on the elect. The, this time around contest in the elections this time around whereas the party of course wants them to wants them to step up like we have seen with bjp actually fielding several union ministers uh, in states as well we've seen it in the state elections and uh, of course uh, uh, this time we can see that the congress also trying to uh, pitch heavy weights uh, in the lok sabha elections but what are we picking up from uh, what are you picking up from your sources in terms of the discontent within the party as far as this particular aspect is concerned? Well, as we've been uh, reporting about the fact, uh, and as you saw yesterday, we uh, broke the news about Mr. Karge uh, not wanting to contest uh, the Lok Sabha constituency. It's in that backdrop uh, that uh, when the general is not ready to get onto the battlefield, what message does it send? Uh, to the other workers and the people who are on the ground. It's in the same backdrop, uh, be it, um, you know, uh, Mr. Ashok Gelot or Sachin Pilot or uh, Kamal Nath or any uh, leader. I mean, I, and that list carries on. Many, many of them, the senior leaders, uh, even ministers in, for example, in Karnataka, not wanting to contest and get into the battlefield in the Lok Sabha. It's really, uh, 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 you know, a troubling sign. Uh, something that the Congress party has to take note of. It's uh, clear that they're already under a formidable challenge, even though they're trying to be united. Uh, but uh, these are uh, perceptions that have to be uh, created. And it's in that backdrop uh, that Mr. Karge himself not wanting to contest the Lok Sabha polls. Sonia Gandhi herself has shifted to the Rajya Sabha. Uh, there is a reluctant uh, Priyanka Gandhi Vadra who wants, who's not yet ready uh, to go to Rai Bareilly. Uh, these send mixed signals. Uh, to the rank and file of the party, especially when you're taking on uh, somebody like Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his party, the BJP and the NDA. Right, Sunil there, appreciate you joining us on this story. Now, as CA rules get notified, we get you a special report on refugees who stand to gain from the act. Watch this special report from Delhi and Lucknow. A celebration after the government notified CAA rules at Delhi's congested Majnu Katila, where over a hundred Hindu families from Pakistan have been living for over a decade. Twenty-one-year-old Amar Lal, who came to India in 2013, is passionate about photography, 
but unable to get a solid break because of his refugee identity. मुझे फोटोग्राफी का बहुत बड़ा शौक है और इंस्टीट्यूट में मुझे एडमिशन करने का दिक्कतें उसमें नहीं 50 year old Dayal Das another Majnu Katila resident and a refugee from Pakistan was so overwhelmed when the CAA bill was passed in parliament in 2019 that he named his granddaughter Nagrikta or citizenship Dayal is not employed and his family of 13 residing here have to struggle even for basic amenities now dayal feels his prayers have been answered bahut wahan pakistan mein to peeda thi lekin wahan parivar bahut pareshan the hum bharat mein isliye aaye the ki hamara dharm hamara muluk yahi hai kyunki yahan hum har kisi ki samajhti sunwai hoti hai sarkar ki to yahan aane ke baad humne 2011 mein hamari parivar aaye the uske baad hamara jatha 483 ka aaya tha uske baad 2019 mein सरकार ने सी ए बिल पास किया संसद में भी हो गया लोकसभा में भी हो गया हम बहुत खुशी उस टाइम पे हमारी पोती नागरिकता थी उसका जन्म हुआ था Now these Pakistani Hindu refugee families are celebrating an early holi. They believe that with CAA rules now being notified, they will be able to lead a better life here now in India. While the law has been implemented, there are many who don't fall under its ambit including those who entered india after 2014 year old roshan a sindhi entered india from pakistan with his family of 7 in january 2015 on a travel visa just days after the ca citizenship deadline of december 13 2014 roshan and his family have been renewing their travel visa every 2 years To sustain his livelihood, Roshan works as an electrician, while his mother sells homemade papad. Roshan hopes, despite not making the cut-off, citizenship will be granted to his family. हम तो कह रहे हैं हमको नागजा मिला है वो तो चाचा ची बात है ये बाग दौड़ने का नहीं करनी पड़ेगी हमको अच्छी अच्छा है तो गवर्नमेंट हमको अपना कर ले यहाँ पे हम रहना चाहते हैं यहीं पे को लौट के नहीं जाएंगे हम तो हमारा कहना यही है राजस्थान हैज द लॉन्गेस्ट वेट लिस्ट फॉर इंडियन सिटीजनशिप फ्रॉम पाकिस्तानी रेफ्यूजीज हु हैव क्रॉस द बॉर्डर राजस्थान आल्सो हैज द लॉन्गेस्ट बॉर्डर विद पाकिस्तान ओवर अ थाउजेंड किलोमीटर्स बिफोर इट वाज फेंस पीपल यूज्ड टू गो बैक एंड फॉर्थ देयर वर रिलेटिव्स लिविंग ऑन बोथ साइड्स ऑफ द बॉर्डर देयर वर मैरिजेस एंड अलायंसेस दैट हैपेंड ऑन बोथ साइड ऑफ द बॉर्डर देयर इज द हिंगलाज माता टेंपल दैट इज इन सिंध इन पाकिस्तान बट एज द डायनामिक्स हैव चेंज्ड इन इंडो पाक रिलेशनशिप्स सो हैव द लाइव्स of these people Rajasthan has the largest number of Pakistani refugees because it has the longest border with Pakistan In Jaipur 44 year old Naresh who came to India on a train in January 2020 is also hopeful that rules will be relaxed for people like him and his five children will have a chance to go to a government school कि वहाँ पे पढ़ना बच्चों के लिए बहुत दूर ना होता था इसलिए बच्चों का भविष्य देख के मैं फिर यहाँ पे आ गया आपका वहाँ पे घर है घर है मेरा बड़ा भाई है जमीन है मैं उन लोगों को भी अब कोशिश कर रहा हूँ कि कोई कहीं ना कहीं उनको एडजस्टमेंट करके यहाँ बुलाए Now the first ever crash of a Tejas aircraft was reported today as a jet crashed in Jaisalmer during an operational sortie. This is the first time the India made fighter plane crashed in its 23 year old history. Oh. Thankfully the pilot ejected safely on time. Indian Air Force has set up a court of inquiry into the matter. 23 years after it first flew an Indian Air Force light combat aircraft also known as the Tejas has crashed in Jaisalmer. in the premises of a hostel fortunately no one was hurt on the ground video has now emerged of the last few moments before the jet crashed a parachute appears as the jet flies on main yahi samne apni office mein khada tha wahan se viman site training ke liye aa raha tha usme se ek pilot kooda uska parachute khul gaya uske pashchat maine socha ye viman mere upar gir raha hai main bhag ke bahar nikla aur viman seedha megawal samat chhatravas mein aage gira 
और क्रैश हो गया ब्लास्ट हुआ भाई तुरंत हमने सौ नंबर पर सूचना दी थी और दस एक मिनट पुलिस आ गई यहाँ इन स्टेटमेंट इंडियन एयर फोर्स सेल्स A light combat aircraft Tejas of the IAF crashed near Jaisalmer today during an operational training sortie. The pilot ejected safely. A court of inquiry has been ordered to ascertain the cause of the accident. The Indian Air Force operates two Tejas squadrons, the number 45 squadron and the number 18 squadron. India has invested heavily in the fighter with 180 variants of the jet on order. Vishnu Shom for NDTV. Earlier today, Prime Minister Narendra Modi witnessed the tri-service exercise Bharat Shakti in Rajasthan's Pokhran. He added that self-reliant India in defence sector is a guarantee of Atma Vishwas in the forces. The Prime Minister, while speaking at the exercise of Bharat Shakti, also added that the first successful flight test of an indigenously developed Agni-5 missile with MIRV technology is a huge step towards Atma Nirbhar Bharat in the defence sector. And the holy month of Ramadan has begun from today and we leave you with some of the best images from the day. Thanks for watching the show.